Destiny Quest Raiders, Tides of Terror is a demonstration to me that we really are in a golden age of the game book. Sure, there aren't as many that come out as in the 80s, or early 90s, but a lot of those were targeting very young readers, people who just churned them out because there was so much of a demand and the average quality wasn't always very good. Now we have fewer game books, but they're written with adult, hobby-oriented readers in mind, so they tend to be longer, more complex, better production values, innovative mechanics. We have seen card-driven game books recently. That's a new thing. We didn't have them back in the day. And Destiny Quest Raiders does indeed present an innovative game system that I had never seen before. Now, you may have seen my videos for Destiny Quest. My videos will give you a very good overview, I believe, of that game system. And so also you will see why I don't think that Destiny Quest Raiders is a spin-off, despite the title in common, the author in common, and the, and the genre, which is fantasy in common, the game system is so radically different that I see this as a parallel, as a parallel series. So here we're going to have a party of heroes. You start by controlling two heroes and during the game you will acquire possibly a third and possibly a fourth. I don't think it's a spoiler to tell you, to show you the heroes that you start with. Also because it's pretty much impossible for you to start the adventure without seeing some of these character sheets. Starting with to tell you first about some of the innovative things that I hadn't seen in other game books before, your party has a shared number of life points, so it's not like she has 10 and he has 15 or whatever. Uh, there's a shared number of points, so when the enemy is hit, you just deduct that from the total of the party. If you go to zero, you usually die, although some restrictions apply. So that's an interesting idea, that's totally new, and when you recruit more heroes, when there, are, and when, uh, when there are more heroes present in a fight, the number of hit points, of life points, is increased. Each hero in your team has a unique set of abilities. They have a basic ability and they start with only that one. So he starts with the slashing blade and Scarlet starts with the quick aim. And they can use this ability in every round of combat. As you gain experience points, you can spend them to unlock these advanced moves and you have to do it in order. So this one first and if you have it then this one, if you decide to spend your points that way. And so you unlock these other abilities that you can use in combat as well, but only once per combat. Okay, so that's again a very new idea, also a bit reminiscent of 4th edition of Dungeons and Dragons, which is obviously the best one, we all know that. Now, uh, combat, that's pretty cool. We, you navigate the text as normal as in a game book. As you can see, the text is, uh, is fairly detailed, it's pretty long. Uh, there's more detail and more, more of a story, more of a scene, more atmosphere than in a lot of other game books. There is no doubt, and you may know that, uh, from Destiny Quest, that Ward is not just a writer of game books, but really... There's more of a writer approach than in a lot of other game books, and this is no exception. Now, from time to time, the story will tell you to turn to a certain chart to resolve combat. I'm not going to turn to that one necessarily. I'm going to turn to one, there you go, for the two characters that we have at the beginning. But, as you can see, quick glimpse, depending on how many characters you have, you'll be sent to a different chart. So that is taking care for you. And also, based on how many characters are there in that scene, you will be told the total number of health points for the team in that situation. Now you see here, that's, uh, that's how it works. Um, you will have your enemies that are divided into ranks and the one closest to the heroes is called the first rank. Also you have little symbols that represent different capabilities, we're going to ignore those for now. Matter of fact, look at this one, this one doesn't have any special uh, abilities. So that's better to tell you the general idea. So, the heroes go first and they all execute one of their actions. Again, suppose I only have the basic actions, so he does two damage to any monster group in rank one, so there would be these groups here, 
and she does one damage to any monster group in rank one or two so these two here so I decide for example to uh, have the swordman slash that one there and I will cross out these two and then she puts an arrow right there and so that eliminates that enemy uh, you can mark your own book if you're just crazy that way otherwise you also have a combat pad which is a whole separate thing with multiple copies of each combat chart and you may have noticed no nope, I didn't use that one either I just had a scratch of paper a piece of paper and I would just draw the diagram every time some of the early battles so we don't need to care to set it in my head but uh, I just draw my own diagram and that's how I roll or don't roll because this is a deterministic combat system so my two characters executed their move and they killed that enemy and now it's time for the enemies to attack so basically from each column all of the closest enemies will attack and give you that damage so this one will give me two this one will give me three since I eliminate that one now this one moved to the first rank and so I take that much damage three three and two so I mark that of my 30 points of health I just lost eight now suppose I take my next turn and I do exactly the same thing slash an arrow there now when it's time for the enemies to attack I would only take five points of damage because there's no one here to replace them so try to clear certain column is definitely a good strategy the system, the basic idea is indeed pretty basic and right now you may feel a bit underwhelmed but trust me there are a lot of interesting wrinkles here with special effects, there may be monsters with arrows that are doing bad stuff uh, from ranks uh, past the other one, um, you may time things so that uh, before I kill this enemy maybe there's a really powerful one here so I get this one down to one and I'm taking damage from that weak one then the next turn I remove that one and I pile up attacks to immediately destroy the other one there's a lot of other, st other stuff that may happen a lot of different symbols uh, but not to the point of becoming overwhelming and so you just go back and forth until until uh, you win or you don't you also have live gems uh, you start with three you may acquire more you can use them during combat you can break a live gem to heal 10 health points from your team or to restart combat which means you regain all of your health but so do they there's also another way of restarting combat <coughs> <coughs> You restart combat, you just redo it. Anyways, so that's uh, that's an unofficial expansion that I just wrote. Just restart combat. But no, I, I, I play by the rules when I when I crack a gem to, to heal. Because it's fun, because it's a fun little combat system. Uh, so what do we have here? We have a game book, which is both uh, a good book and a good game and that's quite remarkable the story is fairly linear fairly I'm not gonna tell you what it is but I can tell you you probably already know you probably already know what the main plot is gonna be about no no really make that guess that guess yep that's what the story is about but for because of tradition I'm not gonna give you that spoiler and there's no problem I play games about classic high fantasy and read books about that because I'm celebrating things that I already know. I'm just trying to see how those archetypes come into play and do pretty much what I expect them to do in a landscape that looks like I expect it to be and it's all good. When I'm looking for avant-garde I can read baroque literature but when I'm not, boom! High fantasy, classic high fantasy, nothing wrong with that. The structure is fairly linear though. Um, game books can go in a lot of different directions that way and Destiny Quest has more of a sandboxy element. It's still divided into larger chapters, acts actually they're called, but within each act you can go in a very different 
you can choose your own order to go and look at different things. Here's more of a traditional branching structure, but then many of the branches will come together to some mandatory points that will correspond to moving to new areas, to acquiring new uh, members of your team. Again, nothing wrong with that. It's the same kind of structure that you have, say, in Lone Wolf uh, uh, game books, and those are very successful, and I enjoy them also. As for the biggest innovation, uh, which is the game system, I like it. I was a little bit skeptical at the beginning. But I felt it was going to be a little too um, basic and linear. But some of the later challenges, and it becomes really a nice little puzzle. And it is a puzzle. You have all of the information available to you. It's entirely deterministic. You can totally puzzle it out. And, you know, you hear people complaining the game books have too much randomness. Boom, no problem with this one. Of course, again, if this was too constricted, too deterministic, then you got the main destiny quest where you have a ton of weapons and procedures and special things and you roll dice a million times. So it seems that the two game systems work well together, one to help you take a break from the other. But personally, I was very impressed uh, by a simple game system which feels and maybe is a board game, a resource management game. I mean, it has the the lovely, cold, calculating element of a Euro game within a system uh, that represents brutal fantasy fights. But it still felt pretty thematic. It feels, it still felt pretty exciting. And just although, again, being a puzzle, it felt like it was a puzzle about a fight between a group of fantasy heroes and a range of different monsters with a lot of different attributes and configurations. So, I was pretty impressed. I'm definitely happy with this first volume, Tides of Terror, of the Destiny Quest Raider system, and I can't wait where to see where the system goes. I would definitely be happy to play more game books in the system because I enjoyed this one very much.